Hi, and welcome to our Concordia Clarity webinars. We're excited to have you here tonight. I'm Ashley Weehy. I am the communications manager here at Concordia Lutheran High School. Tonight, we have a great webinar planned for you. This is really the start of a series of webinars that we have to offer you to really just to get to know more about Concordia. So as with all of our webinars, we have a Q&A feature and a chat feature so that you can ask questions live. We'll take questions at the end. And we have Mr. Jacob Pennycamp, our head of school here to answer those questions for you. So to start us off, we're gonna watch a couple quick videos about our students and then you'll hear from Mr. Pennycamp and some of our students to just learn more about Concordia and the great things that we have to offer. Thanks. Hi, I'm Paige Jackson, a cadet of the class of 2023, and here at Concordia, I can do it all. From sprinting for our track team, to counseling my classmates in peer ministry, to learning about the human body and anatomy, I can do it all. At Concordia, I can do it all, and so can you. From the track, to peer ministry, to the classroom, I'm not limited to just one thing. I can pursue all my passions, whatever they may be, and so can you. So what are you waiting for? Hi, I'm Ray Kesters. I'm a class of 2025 KDET. Here at Concordia, I can do it all. From participating in our JROTC program, to performing on stage with our drama department, to catching for our high school softball team, I can do it all. At Concordia, I can do it all, and so can you. From JROTC to theater and to softball, I'm not limited to just one thing. I can pursue all my passions, whatever they may be, and so can you. So what are you waiting for? Well, hello and welcome. My name is Jacob Pennycamp, and it's my privilege to serve as the head of school at Concordia Lutheran High School. And I'm excited that you're here exploring uh, Concordia as an opportunity, and we're grateful that you're with us today. We're using this webinar format to introduce you and give you just a peek at all the opportunities that make Concordia an exciting place to be. High school in many ways is the launching point for a young person's life. And at Concordia, it's our objective to give lots of opportunities to students so that they can grow and develop into who they're becoming and be ready for whatever comes next in life. Today, it's my privilege to be able to be with you and introduce you to Concordia through the eyes of some current students. I'm blessed to be here with Paige and Evan and Ray, and they're going to share a little bit of their unique story, which together makes up the bigger Concordia story. So thank you for being with us today. You'll recognize Paige and Ray as they were both in the video you just watched. And so we'll get to learn them about them a little bit more as well. So let's just begin. Evan, I'll start with you. Why don't you introduce yourself and list off all the clubs and activities you're involved in. All right, well, hi, I'm Evan. Um, I'm involved in, I do lacrosse, I do drama, I'm a student council, I'm in peer ministry, I do helping hands. Um, I did choir, um, great things to be involved in. They really made my high school years really special. All right, and Ray? Hey, I'm Ray, I'm a sophomore. I'm involved in drama, ROTC, theater, and softball. Okay. Hi, I'm Paige. I'm involved in volleyball, track, uh, peer ministry. I was an epic mentor, and I plan to be involved in a production. All right, with our drama? Yeah, Excellent. before I graduate. Out of your comfort so, zone. So, yeah. Well, did you catch the long list of all the things that they're involved in? Uh, that's the first thing I want you to notice is that that's by design. Uh, nearly every Concordia student could list off at probably at least one club activity team in which they're involved. And that's important because we want you to have a place and to be connected. And that's an important place where you have an opportunity to grow. So one of the biggest challenges that every student faces coming to Concordia is the fear of the first day. Ray, be honest. Yeah. What was it like walking in the doors of Concordia the very first time? Um, I remember the first moment I walked through, I sat there and I was like, crap, what did I get myself into? Because I, ca I came from a homeschool environment. So basically, I knew nobody. It was just me sitting on my couch, getting done at 11 o'clock every day with no teachers, just me and my computer. And I walk into this massive building with people everywhere and teachers, and I'm like, what do I do now? Right. 
And I remember looking at my schedule and being like, I'm not gonna be able to get through today. <laughs> but then all of a sudden someone came by me and started like helping me being like, oh yeah, 301. I don't think that was one of my classes, but that's over here. And then I met Murphy and he was, he really made me feel welcomed and honestly just made for a good day. Excellent. So there were things that got you through that transition. How about Paige or Evan? What else helped I, you through the transition? I think I was a bit nervous, but I also had my sister here with me. So that gave me a bit of comfort. And I think like just the freshman retreat, just like getting to know everybody, that's definitely helped with just like the fears and anxieties of coming to high school, this big building with all these new teachers and all these classes. Yeah. Evan, why don't you, what is the freshman retreat that Paige was talking about? Um, it's really a really special thing they put on here. Um, it's a day off of school. Everybody has e-learning except for the freshmen, and they go to a designated location. And it's kind of just like icebreakers. It's getting to know everybody. It's team building, if you will. It's just trying to make friends and make connections that are going to last the next four years. It's, it's really cool. Excellent. Excellent. Evan, one of the unique aspects is our faith community that we have here at Concordia. And a phrase that we use often is that we keep Christ at the center. And so that means much more than just the class, the religion, theology class you take. Um, it really means to go at the very center of everything. So in your perspective from student government that you're involved in and lacrosse and drama and choir, what does keeping Christ at the center look like? Well, I think in every single one of those activities, um, they always try to keep a basis in that because, you know, it's special. That's what we say we do. But I think it's deeper than that because I think that's what makes us unique because it's, it's, it's more than lacrosse. It's more than drama. It's more than student council. It's we are in fellowship with each other every single day. And yeah, we get to do all this fun stuff, but we base it around Christ and sharing with our neighbors as that's really special to do. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Paige. You are, and I'm gonna speak for you, you are an outstanding athlete in track and volleyball, uh, but you're more than that. You're also a very academically minded student and you're a peer ministry. How do you balance all of that? Yeah, definitely at times it can be a struggle. Like I'm gonna be honest, there's times where I'm like, I don't know if I can do it all, but I know that I have a great support system at home. And when I come into the building, I know that I have great support from the teachers, from my friends, from, anybody really like even if i don't talk to a student on a daily basis i know that they'll be there to give me encouraging words and even the counselors everybody's just so like we're just a family and we all just give each other advice and we help when we need help and the teachers are so understanding and they'll work with you and help you when you're struggling good and i think sometimes we feel like we have to pick a lane like right. socially, I'm in, I'm an athlete, so I have to be with athletes and act like an athlete or, you know, maybe academic or maybe another club or whatever. What is that vibe here at Concordia? Oh, we're a family here, I would say, 100% a family. It doesn't matter whether you're in band, choir, you do sports, it doesn't matter here. That's not your identity because we're all, our identity is in Christ. Oh, so we all love each other how Christ would love us. And I also think it's really special because like half of the stuff I do now, I would have never even imagined doing when right. I was a freshman. It's so it's so inclusive and so inviting. And I yeah. think that just adds even more right. to the aspect of Christ at the center, Definitely. because we all want to be like caring, loving, sharing family Christians. Definitely. And it's it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, Ray, uh, one of the things you listed off was J.R.O.T.C. Um, you're the only one in the three that's part of that. But about about 20% of our students are involved in that. That's really our largest organization. What is JROTC? Well, JROTC is the Junior Officer Reserves Training Corps. It is an Army-based curriculum, and it basically teaches everyday folk, or, well, students in this case, to become good leaders by using like certain strategies or teaching through the classroom and ways to communicate properly with others or honestly be able to take control of a situation and lead a group. And they do that by courses, experience, like I'm in charge of, well not in charge, but I help mentor the freshman right now as a sophomore. Yeah. And so it's pretty cool. Yeah. So is everybody in the program going into the Army? Oh no. I used to think that, oh yeah, Army, like this is great, but slowly over time I started to realize I don't have to be in the army to use these aspects. 
I can do it through my classroom or to other people. And you trust me, you aren't required to go in the army after that. It's basically just there to teach you how to lead and become a better citizen. Excellent. Excellent. And real quickly, um, there's a variety of ways you can be involved in other activities through JROTC. Would you just name a couple of those that, that might, people might be interested in? Yeah, there's drill, which basically that's what people would typically think of when you go to the army, like the marching in circles and doing fancy stuff. We also have like rifle, which that's more like um, shooting, like aiming for these little targets and firing at them. Then we have co-ed, which it's kind of like, have you seen like river dancing or like whatever that is? Step dancing. Yeah. That's what it is. And then there's raiders, which that's one of the more army based things, more agility. That's more of our athletic side of the whole Absolutely. program. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. For the three of you uh, generally, um, academically, how have you been prepared for whatever comes next, do you think, with our with our curriculum and the way our teachers instruct. And Ray, I'll, I'll throw it to you first. Okay, well, one thing I've learned coming from a homeschool environment is how to interact with my teachers and the people I'm working with in class. Because there's a big difference when it's just you and then with you working with others. Right. Yeah, uh, to add to what you said, I think like just being able to not have fear of going up to a teacher and asking for help or even asking if I can come in on a different time and go over this, because they're all so loving and caring and what what's best for you and what yeah. you to excel in their classroom and do the best that you can. Yeah. So I think that's been a huge blessing. And some of our coursework even is very specific in trying to help students identify, is this a career path? Evan, you're enrolled in our education professions. Um, how does that course help narrow that field for you? Well, I think something that just really makes it super cool is that we have a speaker almost every single class and it's a speaker who it's their journey from when they were in grade school to what they're doing now and some it's twists and turns and zigzags and literally they had no idea they were going to be a teacher but then you have these people that they've always wanted to know because they always want to form those connections with their students and they just they want to see the beauty of kids learning and being educated great what's your favorite concordia experience Ooh, oh that's too many um, Go ahead, Evan. What do, you, what do you say? Football games have to be in the top three. Um, that if you want to <laughs> even me meeting people, I mean, you're going to stand by a variety of people, and it might be awkward, but just don't. Make, it's such a fun environment. We do it, the student section. It's we do chants. We support <laughs> our team, and it's yeah. talk about cadet pride because that's as much yeah. as it gets right there. <laughs> right. That's as much as it gets. Um, I would say just being involved in everything that I've been involved in has made a huge impact on my high school career. And I've made so many memories and I've met so many different people that I wouldn't have met if I didn't involve myself in all my extracurriculars. Um, I would say my favorite would have to be when we beat Doinger last year. In volleyball. In oh, yeah. sectionals. sectionals, yeah. That was, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll remember yeah, that, that forever. That was great. I think, I think mine's in athletics as well. When we were playing for the conference championship, we didn't win, but it was a game where we played a hard team and we really saw our team come together and just really be involved in that Concordia family. And we kind of had one of those moments where you kind of just set aside everything that happened in the past season or preseason and we came together and played that game. We gave our heart. Very good. Well, one of the highlights at Concordia, in addition to athletics and academics, is our fine arts program. And we have an outstanding state recognized choir. We have a band that uh, performs at the marching competition at state every year. We also have an outstanding drama uh, program. And a couple of you have mentioned that. Uh, Paige, talk a little bit about the drama and the drama classes. Okay. So uh, I haven't personally been able to be in a play or a musical or anything like that just because of time with volleyball and track and balancing academics with all of that. Um, but I've been able to take classes that uh, they offer here. And that's just been a huge blessing to be able to still be a part of the drama program, but not necessarily be on the stage where I can still um, express my acting side and tune into all my dramatic features of my personality and uh, just be in community with other people who enjoy and love acting like I do. And Evan, you've been in productions. List off a few of those that you've been in. 
I've been in our musicals, which are our most popular, uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Um, in eighth grade, I did Newsies. And I'll get into more of um, being involved outside of high school because that's also a very special part of the drama program. Um, but Beauty and the Beast and a bunch of fan favorites, people, the ones people love. And it's awesome because the shared love is brought together in the musical and you get to sing together and the dancing, it's, it's awesome. And back to the being involved outside, um, especially musicals, they are always looking for like younger kids to come help with the musicals. And that's something I did. And that's something I've been doing since as long as I can remember. That was, I remember doing a play all the way back in 2016 and I was just a little kid. Now I'm a senior and I'm getting ready to do my final year. And it's a road of things I'm so glad I did. I met so many people, made so many long lasting relationships. And those are one of the highlights, if not the highlight of truly my high school career. Yeah. Excellent. And we watch loving you guys perform. Um, another aspect that I want to touch on is, and I know Evan and Paige, you're both peer ministers. So why don't you define a little bit what is a peer minister and talk a little bit about the role that you play here at the school. Okay, so a program, I guess you could call it, uh, that we have here at Concordia is peer ministry. And it's basically um, just like, it's a program where we are taught how to counsel our peers. And you wanna add like on the peer ministry retreat and stuff? Yeah, at the beginning of the year, we take all the people that really sign on and are chosen to be peer ministers and we team build with each other because I think that is the most important thing, especially in what um, we're called to do as peers to each other. You know, um, high school isn't easy. That's the bottom line. Um, you're gonna feel really anxious. You're gonna back into a wall, but like, you can come to a peer who's going through the exact same thing maybe, and they can help you through it. They can pray with you. They can shed their advice and give their advice to you. And I think the retreats are a really good way because like Paige said, we're trained to do it. Like we go through things, what people might feel, scenarios to handle. And that's also a thing that's extremely Christ-centered. Right. I mean, cause the love of God is unlike none other. And sharing that to somebody who maybe not be focusing on it at that moment in time can be really peaceful and bring peace of mind, especially to a tense situation in high school. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity if you're the type of person that's just like, I don't wanna to go to an adult with how I'm feeling. I'm not comfortable doing that. It's great to have peers like Evan and I and even Ray, even though she's not in it, but just to have somebody to talk to and just be open and honest and even, even just to listen, like that we don't have to give the we don't have to give you advice. We don't we can just sit there and listen, and we can pray with you. And I think that's so special, like being able to pray with somebody. Like, I just think that's just it's, the it's cherry on top of everything. Yeah, it's the best. Like thing. nothing compares to right. that. Well, tell us, are there any teachers or classes that have really helped? Uh, inspire you or um, open your eyes to a, a career path or a way of thinking that maybe was unexpected? Yeah, um, I would say our anatomy class that Evan and I took, it was last year, last year, mm -hmm. right? Last year, that was an incredible experience. Like I've always been interested in the body and I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. yeah. it's always been something that's interests me. And just being able to take a class, like, and also have that be involved and surrounded with God at the center of it, that was just incredible for me. It's, it's, it's like every single system we went through, every single unit, um, it, there was always something that really led a trail back to Christ and how we are truly created through Him. Right. And it's always just, it's inclusive, you know, it's always if you have a question, ask it. It's, and it's yeah. just, it's a huge, group of people just really learning about something that should be learned about and in a way that's really centered around Christ. Yeah, it always pointed back to Christ, no matter what we were learning. We could be learning about the digestive system, the your fingers, your toes, all that, but it always was pointed back to Christ and who really created us. And that's just, that was just amazing. It was really eye-opening. Yeah, for sure, definitely. 
Thank you for investigating our school and spending this time with us. We're proud of the Christian community we have here, the ample opportunities we provide, and most of all, our students. Please continue to watch for upcoming webinars where we'll dive deeper into topics like our faith community, academic life, extracurriculars, and admissions, how we make this quality Christian education affordable for all families and accessible. If you'd like to learn more about becoming a cadet, please contact us, attend an upcoming event, or schedule a personal tour with one of our staff. All right, thank you. That was so wonderful. We love hearing from our students and the wonderful stories that they share. And you heard it right from them. It's uh, just, uh, they truly love being at Concordia and we love hearing that. So right now we have some time. If you have any questions, we'd love to answer those live. If you're watching this as a recording, you can also email us at info at clhscadets.com or always feel free to call the high school if you have any questions. We have a great admissions team and just a great staff that can help you through anything. So right now I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Jacob Pennycamp to um, answer those questions and just talk a little bit more about what we offer. Yeah, hello, and thanks for checking us out and uh, and joining us on this webinar. We're really glad that you are uh, in the mode of trying to discover uh, what is the Concordia difference. Uh, I want to begin by saying the best way uh, to learn more about Concordia to, is to get on campus. And so uh, the very first thing I want to invite you to is um, uh, our admission staff would love to meet with you uh, at a scheduled time, and we are happy to do that. Uh, so please just contact us and um, Ashley will be sharing contact information uh, and, and that's always available on our website. And the other is to attend an upcoming event. And that can either be a public event like a football game or a basketball game or uh, one of our fine art productions, uh, or it can be one of our um, planned admissions um, and information sessions. And we have a number of those beginning uh, in November with uh, Concordia Day on November 11th. That is a day for eighth graders to come on campus. Uh, then also shortly after we have a Discover Concordia Night, which is for students and families, parents especially. That's on November 16th. Uh, we'll have an open house in January and uh, we will open our application period as early as October 18th. So if you know that you would like to become a, a cadet or have your student become a cadet, uh, there'll be an opportunity coming real soon for that. Actually, I got to admit, uh, that might have been the first time I watched that video all the way through. Uh, so fun, so fun to, to be reminded of uh, the great stories those, those kids shared with us about, uh, about what Concordia experience is for them. You know, I get chills. I've I've watched it multiple times now. And every time that they talk about that Christ-centered and what the teachers are doing in class, it, it just, it gives me chills. It's so nice. And, you know, that's all from them. It, yes, it was. You know, yes, this was. was not staged. This, this was all from them. And it was so, so wonderful to hear. Mm -hmm. All right. So we do have a question. Um, as a seventh grader, when do you apply? Um, Jake, do you want to take that? Or do you want me to? Yeah, I, why don't we piggyback on that? Um, application really is for the next school year, so there's no need to apply early. Um, Ashley, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, so really as a seventh grader, we encourage you to come to the open house, come to those events, future cadet nights, and really see what the school is about. And then right during that eighth grade year in October, we kick off that priority enrollment period. So that's when you'll start applying. They'll come to Concordia Day. We'll have Discover Concordia Night, which we encourage you to attend as a seventh grader too. Um, so really that's when you're coming in, making sure that uh, you're applying, but we'd love to hear that you're excited about coming as a seventh grader. And yeah, I think one of the biggest questions that we get sometimes um, from other people is uh, just do you have to be Lutheran to come in? Is it, are there other schools that you can come in? So yeah, Jake, could you touch on that? Yeah. Great, great question, Ashley. And, and you're right. We, we do get that. Um, we are, we are distinctively a Christian and a Lutheran Christian in specific uh, uh, school. And yet uh, we are absolutely open um, to anyone who would, would find value in what a parochial Christian educational setting would be. And so what that really means is yes, about 
60, maybe just under 58% of our students do come through um, one of our of our congregational uh, association um, con um, they're, they're members of one of those, uh, but that obviously means a, a good number of our students are coming to us. Um, maybe they've attended a Lutheran grade school, maybe they haven't. Um, but yeah, we are we are very much um, welcome and open um, to anyone who would find value in the partnership they would have with a with a distinctively Christian uh, education. Great yeah, question. One yeah, one of the great things that you'll hear through this series is just more about faith and what we believe in, how that really is integrated in everything that we do at Concordia. It's not just in chapel or in our Cornelia small groups. It's it's in everything, like what you heard from the students and what they were saying. It's in the classes. It's in the science classes. It's in the English classes. It's in everything. Yeah, and that will actually be the final of our of our four webinar series. Will be a, a, I, I got to talk with some students and a teacher about the foundations of faith that we try to set here at Concordia, and uh, and Ashley, we are doing um, four of these webinars in as a series. Uh, so again, like I mentioned in the video, we'll be talking on the top. Uh, there's a, a section just on academics and the academic difference that Concordia makes. Uh, there'll be one on um, the admissions and affordability, and that actually launches our priority window. That'll coincide with that October 18th. Uh, and then we have, uh, I think, a real important one. And I wanted in this first one to really get a flavor of all the things that can happen at Concordia. And we didn't even get to you know, probably not even a half of the activities that our students are involved in, but we have an entire webinar on uh, extracurriculars and engaging uh, students and, and helping them to be part of something bigger than themselves. But again, it's not just about the webinars. We really want these all leading up to you coming and, and actually walking our hallways and being on campus. And um, if you have the opportunity even to do that within a school day, that can be uh, uh, really revealing and, and help you see the community that we form here at Concordia. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got another question. Um, can you talk just more about academic life, maybe the schedule and kind of the um, classes and what's expected of a student? Right. And again, a deeper dive on this will be in a future webinar, but uh, we, um, we, we do define ourselves as, as an academically rigorous uh, school, meaning um, we really do want to um, walk alongside uh, st our students, provide a curriculum that's challenging, um, and also help them to be able to access that, that at, at whatever level they, they come in at. Um, we have what's called a, a, a four block or a modified block schedule. Uh, that allows our students to have uh, eight classes every semester. Um, some of those classes, of course, are year long. Uh, some are only by semester, but that leaves just a little bit more wiggle room for um, some elective choices to, for our students. Um, and we also believe that having that, that block um, schedule, which really means that students are going to be in a, in a class a much longer period of time and fewer during the day, helps our students to really be able to focus in on, on a subject area, um, receive instruction, have opportunity to practice and complete work in class under the supervision of a teacher, um, maybe allows a little bit longer period of time for relationships, which I hope you saw in the video are really important to us here, form between teachers and students. Um, and I, I hear from our own students, including my own, who've graduated from here, that they appreciated the modified schedule because it, it, it often allowed them on, a, on an evening to have fewer subjects for which they might have homework. Um, each night. So it it starts to kind of become a little bit more of a collegiate model um, for students in terms of their academic life. Yeah. And I will say just talking from the students, they really love it. They love the longer classes where they can spend time actually diving in, getting work done in class, being able to talk to teachers. And that was a great thing. Like you heard from our students earlier, they they have the opportunity to go ask their teachers. They get to know their teachers. They can ask them questions that help them along. And as you'll hear in our academics webinar, you'll also um, learn about our study center. And we talked to the director of our study center, Ms. Sherrod. And so it's a great resource that we have available to our students to help them along, come alongside them if it's a matter of just needing tutoring or if they need help throughout the day, whether that's physically, mentally, whatever that is to help them with their academics. We have a great resource through the study center. 
Hey, let me say one more thing too, just in general about our, our academic programming. We are fully accredited and recognized by the state of Indiana. Um, our students uh, um, graduate with a full uh, uh, diploma that's recognized uh, by the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, uh, for those students who desire it, um, a Concordia degree matters in terms of uh, competitive college applications. And the types of experiences that you heard from Evan and Ray and, and Paige all help to build that resume uh, for those students who are really looking for, um, maybe it's a, a competitive scholarship or an application into a school that, that might be difficult to obtain. Wonderful. Well, it looks like we answered all the questions for this evening, but if you have any other questions, uh, like I said, we've got some more webinars coming up. Please uh, tune into those and bring your questions along, and we uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks for being with us tonight.